Alright, peace and greetings YouTubers. Alright, so BT Honors 2016. I feel like I haven't done a video in like a month, but you know what, I've been dealing with some stuff on the side. I'm gonna be alright though, so no, no, no worries. Um, BT Honors 2016, if you follow me, you know that every year I go to the BT Honors Award Ceremony and I always do a video and tell you guys about things that happen that may not have necessarily made it on TV. This year I went as a seat filler again, and the thing about going to BET Honors as a seat filler is it's a love-hate relationship because you never really know what your experience is going to be like. Some years it's a great year, other years you're just like, why did I come to this mess? Um, 2013 was like my favorite year to go. That's when they put me in the front row. I had some camera time. I didn't have to move. The show was good. I mean, we, we, we partied in there. 2014 was a different experience. Like, first of all, I had to deal with a lot of rude people. One, I thought I was going to have to karate chop Wolf Blitzer. I don't feel like explaining that, but you can watch it on the last the 2014 video. I thought I was going to have to fight him and his wife, and then um, something happened where there was a, some miscommunication about my seat, and I ended up having to be out in the hallway for like a segment of the show, and then, I mean, they closed the curtain on me and closed the door, and I just had to listen from the side, and as soon as I got out there, that's when they brought out Karen Clark here and Aretha Franklin. I was like, nah, this is some bulls. <laughs> but, uh, and then last year was even worse, because I didn't even get in the show. Something happened, and I got registered for NFL honors. And I certainly didn't want to go to that at the time because I was still in therapy and recovery and popping all kind of pills from the Seahawks losing the Super Bowl a month earlier. So, you know, it's been a lot of hate. And the thing about going as a seat filler is I don't really enjoy doing the seat filler work because I feel like sometimes you're, you're looked at as a second class citizen. And people forget, I'm like, here's my thing about a seat filler. Everybody who's going, everybody has their own visions and goals and plans on being great. They just haven't got there yet. So it's like, don't look down on us, okay? Don't, don't do it. And plus, I just go because I want to enjoy the show. But the thing about it is you, you people sometimes kind of look down on you and you kind of get treated really terribly sometimes. Not really me, because I ain't no punk. But, um, yeah, I, I've seen some things. This year was interesting, though, because it's funny because seat fillers are really territorial, too. It's like all the seat fillers, because we know the more seat fillers that are there, the less likely you are to have a good seat, and the less likely you are to have TV time, and the less likely you are to even be down on the floor. Because when there's too many of us, they put us in the balcony and stuff. So it's like... <laughs> when you get there originally and all the seat fillers are in the little seat filler location, everybody's looking all side. Everybody's so exclusive and territorial. Like, what the f*** are you doing here? How do you know about this? You mess up my chances for TV. Like, that's literally what it's like. And the thing is, I don't get starstruck, so I'm not pressed about, like, really being, you know, around anyone because I'm not going to be like, oh my god, that's awesome! It's like, I just want me a good seat and some camera time and I just want to enjoy the show. So, um, they seated me in the third row this year. I was sitting in the third row. And I was sitting right by Monica, the deal, and the Braxtons. Like, the Braxtons were behind me, Monica was in the row in front of me, and the deal was in the same row as me. And let's just talk about Monica for one second. Monica won the award for the best looking person in the room. Monica was fine. Like, Monica, like, there's TV fine, and then there's fine in real life. Like, Monica looks really good. Like, really good. I, like, when she came in, everybody's just, oh, oh, oh. Who's she sitting by? Like, Monica looked so good. And I just, and, yeah. Now, the thing that got me about Monica, though, was she had an entourage of, like, three or four people. So she had this big old giant security guy who was standing right by me the whole show. Like, literally, I was sitting in the third row right by the wall. I was, like, the last seat to the wall, and then it goes this way to the aisle. So big, huge man is just right here the whole time. Just macho. The whole show didn't move like a church usher just standing there. And then um, Monica also had, like, somebody from her glam squad. So there was this guy that just held the brush, and he was sitting next to me, and then this other guy who was like the social media um, person, I guess, and then they sat next to the, the brush man, and then next to Monica, like the girl in front of us was like an assistant or something. Now here's my only beef. Monica's brush man, and somehow he ended up taking the social media duties at the same time, he wore a freaking sweatshirt, which meant that all of the camera time and possible TV time that I would have had was automatically canceled, because when they crop to Monica's side or crop to our role, they don't want to capture the guy in the sweatshirt because that's going to take away the prestige and everything from the award show. So I knew as soon as that happened, I ain't getting no camera time. I was so annoyed. I was like, you, you really messed up my chances. You know, there ain't no th somebody important could have been watching. Um, so I ain't getting no camera time like that. I was annoyed. But he, yeah, he just had on a sweatshirt. And then the other thing that kept getting me was like, they tell you, um, you know, no phones, no this, that, and third, they're going to escort you out. And, like, because he's doing Monica's social media, every single time he would pull the phone out every five seconds and be doing this, that, and the third. But he'd always do it when the lights in the house were out. Like, when Jesse Spoiler was performing and it was pitch black in there, he got the phone. And you know how, like, iPhones and stuff are bright? I'm like, can you just dim the brightness? Like, if this, he pulled the phone out, shh, the phone would be so bright. And I'm just like, man, please, God, don't let the people come and think it's me. It's really not me. Um, let me get to the show, though. Um, Arsenio um, was the host. 
did okay. My favorite host with BT on this has always been Gabrielle Union, but Arsenio was alright, but he cussed too much. There was a lot of stuff he said that didn't even make the show. He, like, when I say he dropped the F-bomb so many times, my thing about it was it wasn't even that kind of event. I'm like, this, you should have saved that for, like, BET Hip Hop Awards or even BET Awards. But, like, for this, you, you know, you got Eric Holder in the audience, so you need to be a little mindful of what you're going to put out there. He was still funny, but it was like... It wasn't even necessary. Sometimes people cuss and it's not even needed. It doesn't even fit in there right. So I'm kind of like, what are you doing, man? But uh, overall, he was an okay host. He was cool. Um, Tony Braxton opened the show. And I love Tony to death. I love Tony. She's a favorite. I've seen her live a few times. But I didn't like the performance at all. Um, and even with it being on TV, that made me not even like it even more. Um, the thing about it was, I'm not a fan of medleys, unless they're with up tempos. For some reason, you can't do a good medley of songs when there's slow songs and mid-tempos, because they just don't flow into each other the right way. So it was like the songs just didn't flow, and, you know, I felt like she was dodging all of the singing on this performance. You know, she'd do a little... Like, just a little bit, but she wasn't really giving me the Tony I wanted, so I was kind of like, Tony, come on, man. It was still cool, and then the, the sisters in the back looked all, I don't know if they had just practiced the night before, so they didn't really have it down, but Trina was going through it on the side. I was like, Trina, come on now, come on, pull it together. And I mean, I love Tony, but I, I would rather she just done one straight song and just killed it, but it just didn't flow good. Like, if you want to do a medley, it has to be a bunch of up temples. Like, some people are really good at medleys. You know, Janet can do a really good set of medleys, because she has all those funky tracks, and they flow right into each other. Whitney Houston also does a really good job of medleys with, like, the slow jams together, but that's because she had Ricky Minor as the band director. Now, Adam Blackstone was the band director at BET Honors, and, I, and maybe it had to do with, you know, Tony not using her own band, but using the house band, and stuff just didn't flow that well. I, I just wasn't really that moved. She looked great. I mean, she still sounded decent, but I wasn't blown away. Plus, the other thing that I will get to in a second is, I had a headache the entire show, mainly because during a little seat filler process, it took us two and a half hours just to get in the theater. They had us waiting in this room for the longest. And during that time, I developed like one of those headaches where you had the pressure behind your eye. And I don't know if that was because I didn't eat before I left and I was already lightheaded and tired. So by the time Tony got up there, I was already like in a bad mood. So she opened. She was cool. I still love Tony. She's great. She's a legend. We should appreciate her a little bit more. But I wasn't really moved by the performance. And clearly the audience wasn't either because nobody stood up, which I don't know if it's because we didn't know that Tony was performing and she just started. Because they just said, you know... The lights just went out and the show started. There was no, like, ladies and gentlemen, Tony Braxton. You know, it was none of that. Um, let me move on. Um, so they honored uh, Melody Hobson, L.A. Reid, Patti LaBelle, Eric Holder, and Lee Daniels. Um, when they did the... Let me see. I liked the Melody Hobson. I really liked her the most out of everybody. The funniest thing, though, was, like, when she won her award, you know, they do the little video, video montage, and then they have the person to introduce you. And Janelle Monae was just about to introduce her. Melody was already on the stage. She was walking to get her award. So they had to have her go back and kind of redo that part and have them reintroduce her because she didn't know that she was going to be introduced to come to the stage. She was ready to get that award. I mean, she was pumping it to that stage. I like her, though. Um, Jesse Smollett, you know, his performance. Here's, here's my thing. I like Jesse Smollett on Empire. And I like him in some of the, the earlier movies and the earlier work he's done, but I, for some reason he doesn't do a lot for me as an entertainer yet. There's hope. It's just that vibrato I can't get with. Um, so when they introduced him, I'm like, oh god, what's he about to sing? And then he started with the acapella. I'm like, oh, they're trying to kill me in here. I told y'all I got a headache. But honestly, he was actually decent. He wasn't bad. And I think what ha helped him was whoever the two women were that were singing with him, they were really on it, and they had really good tones. So when they did that little acapella part and blended it, it blended really well, and you almost couldn't hear that, that vibrato he has. Um, and, you know, when he got to the man in the mirror, I'm like, okay, I, I forgot why they keep trying to make Jesse be so deep. He's not. But he was good. Um, I enjoyed it. There was a part, it, it didn't really come off well on camera, but like, they had this part, like, while he's singing, they had all the people walk down the aisles and hold hands and... All, you know, all that mess, and it, it just didn't come out good, I guess, because of the lighting, so they didn't really show it on TV. Um, but he, he did decent. Um, he did better than I thought, because every time I hear him, I'm like, oh, he's going to sound a mess. Um, how long have I been talking? Oh, I need to move faster. I'm taking too long. Okay. Now, this is the part where my headache just got to the best of me, or just got into my spirit deep. They do this Natalie Cole tribute, and I was so happy that they did one, because I was still pissed at the Grammys for that crap that they did. So they had Lettucey come out, and you know Lettucey is a part of the Scream Queen team. You know, that's Jennifer Hudson, that's Fantasia, that's Lettucey. And, and I've even put Jasmine in there in a little bit. Jasmine's like the diet version of that. But Lettucey screams, 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 and she went and nailed it. Did that Natalie Cole, I've got love on my mind, 
and the, this will be, but the thing was my headache was so bad at this point in the show. Because the thing is, when you're in the third row, the speakers are right there. So, I'm hitting every drum, bass line, cymbal, orchestra hit is just hitting me. So by the time Let Us See got to the end of that analysis, I was like, <laughs> I was about to cry, like I want to go home. And I had to go to the bathroom at that point, but you couldn't go to the bathroom, you just got to sit there. But she was excellent. That's probably, I enjoyed that performance more than her Shaka Khan tribute from a few years earlier. Let Us See was excellent. Um, I really enjoyed that. Um, the other thing, um, Usher came out and he did his um, L.A. Reid piece. Usher was cool. It was a good little part in there by the time he got the You Don't Have to Call. It was, it was dope. I liked it. It was fun. I almost wish he would have done like a, a more full-out performance. I mean, he kind of did, but we were really, it was like a good throwback. It took me back to middle school. I forgot Usher had some, you know, so many hits back in the day. Um, the Eddie Levert piece was entertaining. That's like, you know, the drunk uncle that comes to the barbecue and wants to sing or the, the when, when you go to church and the men's choir has to perform and nobody, <laughs> that's what it felt like. But, you know, he's a legend and we like the OJs and everything, so we just, yeah, that was great. It, it, it was more like he's, he and Patty are good friends. He's, he's singing to his friends, so it, it wasn't for us to be entertained. It was just for them too. That's cool. Uh, oh, the deal. Let me talk about this too. I forgot. So... <clears throat> The deal, I know their music, I just never knew what they looked like. I knew L.A. Reid and Babyface were in the group, but I didn't know the other ones were in the group. I didn't know what they looked like. So, when they came in, I was so confused at first because I really thought Prince and Revolution were in the building. Because one guy, the ball guy with Chase, he had these ruffles on his shirt, and then the other guy had like this platinum gray slick down hair. I'm like, who the hell is that coming in here? And then they, oh, they come to my role. Oh, they come. Between sweatshirt and these people, I'm not going to get no camera time. Then I realized they were the deal. I'm like, oh. Maybe I might get some camera time. Um, but they came in, and I was like, oh, okay. I was so confused because they just they had so many unique looks. You know, you, when you get a chance, go back and Google what they looked like that night, what they were wearing. I was just a little, there was a lot going on. There was a lot. I mean, you know, my head was already throbbing, and, you know, my vision wasn't as good in the left eye, so I'm, I'm squinting to make sure I can see correctly. I, I, I don't know. They were good. I really enjoyed the performance. They were funky, too. They almost had a little bit of that Minneapolis sound, too. Um, but I knew the song two occasions. I was like, oh, that's them. Okay. I just thought that was Babyface by itself. So look at me learning something new. Um, moving on, you know, Patty's tribute was excellent. We love Patty. Patty is everybody's aunt. We all wish that was our aunt in real life. Um, she was good. Let me see. Oh, you know what? Speaking of Monica, one other thing. When Monica was doing her uh, bit, what I really enjoyed that she said was when she said listening to um, vintage Patty is an education. And that's so true, and I think that's true about a lot of entertainers. You know, I really hope that as these greats start to pass on, some of these new up-and-coming artists can really follow suit and really bring the talent back. Because I was thinking, like, what are we going to do in 20 years when it's time for them to honor the Brandys and the Beyonce's and everybody else? Who's going to be performing for them? Because there's not a lot of great people out right now. I mean, what, you going to have Jeremiah and Bryson Tiller and, and, and The Weeknd come out and do tributes? That's going to be hard to sit through. Nothing against you. I know you Bryson Tiller fans go hard for him, but I'm sorry. I, I haven't heard anything vocally astounding yet. He's decent, though. But yeah, so I don't know. They're going to have Future up there doing a tribute to somebody. Um, oh, another thing that I felt bad for Monica. Um, when our single introduced her, he didn't know the name of her album. So he said, like, oh, her album Red Code is out. So they had to redo that part. And I think Mac Wilds had to redo his part as well. Um, something he messed up one of the girls' names that he was painting thing to or whatever. Um, what else did I miss? Oh, man, listen. Jasmine Sullivan. Ah, oh, that's my girl. She was getting it. Um, I still had a headache, but you know I like Jasmine. I'm, I'm a big, big fan of Jasmine, so I, I let my headache, I just pretended I didn't have it for a few minutes, and Jasmine did her piece, and her and Raheem Devon did the Earth, Wind, and Fire tribute. That was probably my favorite moment of the show. I mean, we get it. When she got to September, because that's my karaoke song, by the way. I can kill September. I do it today, but I, you know, I don't want to take the the essence away from Jasmine, because I can't even stand in a room with her and try to open my mouth to sing. But that's my karaoke song. So when she got to September, we, it was good. Now, the thing about it is she forgot to introduce Raheem Devon before he came out. So they actually redid that entire piece from the boy playing the little instrument. They did that all over again. And she actually did her performance twice, and so did Raheem Devon, which was fine, because I like Jasmine. Now, I mean, at this point, my head, it, my whole head was numb, so it didn't even matter no more. The speaker's just blaring. <laughs> And I was just like, man. But it was it was good. It was good. Um, is there anything else I missed? I think that's pretty much the show. Um, let me just double check my phone here. 
Uh, did I? Oh, y'all might skip Fantasia. I'm sorry, Lord, forgive me. Um, Fantasia also came out and did her Patty tribute. She was actually sick that day, but you really couldn't tell because she still killed it. And of course, Patty was excellent. Just, I mean, Fantasia was excellent. Look at me calling Fantasia Patty. See, that's when you know you do stuff right when you get mistaken for the legends. Um, Fantasia was excellent, and, and you know, my headache, I didn't care about no more. Fantasia ate that song, and she's tributed Patty LaBelle so many times. I feel like sometimes it's like, hey, Patty, girl, what? What you want me to sing this time? You want me to do You Are My Friend? Okay, I'll do that one. Because, you know, I've already done Lady Marmalade, and I've done Somebody Loves Your Baby, and I've done all these other ones. But I'll do this one for you. All right. Okay, I'll call you back. Like, that's what I feel like. Um, but overall, it was a great experience. I love BET Honest because I love that it shows the excellence. I love that, you know, you can show the work of what Eric Holder has done, or Melody Hobson, or Lee Daniels, or L.A. Reid, or... Uh, Patty LaBelle and just how great they've been and it just goes to show that there's so much greatness within our community And that's why I always enjoy going to this award show because it's one of the few award shows We have where it's the work and the talent and the, the genuine Aspect of people having that respectability about themselves that gets honored and you know You don't always get to see that as often so I really appreciate that you can kind of get that from like the trumpet and the Stella Awards But I feel like BET Honors just takes the cake and maybe NAACP Awards as well anyway I'll try to do more videos this week, y'all. I'm sorry for not really being around like that. But yeah, um, let me know what you think about the show. There wasn't a whole lot that really that um, happened that didn't make the air. Everything kind of made the air this year. So there wasn't any major scandals. The cameramen weren't fighting like they were in 2012. And, you know, there, there wasn't any major issues with sound or anything. Um, other than Jasmine having to do Jasmine and Raheem doing their piece twice. And then um, them correcting Monica's album title and Mac Wilds having to re-say his part, it was really no mi mishaps. The show just kind of flowed, you know? Um, so that was pretty much it. Um, let me know what you think. And I guess that's it. I'm out. Subscribe.